Hello, welcome to Crypto Kid Podcast. I'm uh, definitely honored to have you on the show. So this is the CEO of Digital Version Group. And why don't you give a little introduction of yourself and how you got into the crypto world? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Cahill Camden. Um, and you know, for those who are interested, uh, yeah, I'm the CEO of Digital Vision Media Group. And so what we do is we help uh, Web3 companies, blockchain companies with growth. I specifically work with a number of companies. Some of them you've likely heard. You're probably using their browsers um, mm -hmm. right now. And I, I specifically help with uh, growth strategy. So I do fractional CMO work. And then my agency does content marketing, PR, and paid ads. Okay. Okay. That is amazing. That's amazing. So have you been through multiple bull, mar bull and bear markets? Yeah, absolutely. So I got started in crypto back in 2017. Um, so I've seen the seen and worked through the ICO um, bull run <clears throat> and crash the the first major crypto winter, and um, have been through a couple of cycles over over the last few years. So you know we're we're currently in another down cycle right now, and uh, yeah, I've, I've, we've been here before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Same here. I've been I got invested in 2017 and back back in like 2012 2013 i saw bitcoin at $110 and yep. just people saying that it's sketchy and it's used for bad things and i was just like oh, i don't know so later on down the road i was just like you know i think there's real potential in this market in this industry and something definitely about to happen and sure enough 2017 Boom! The bear market or the bull market came, and I was just like kicking myself in the butt for that. Yep, I, I, I had a very similar story. I heard I'd heard about uh, Bitcoin from a friend of mine back in 2013, 2014, and I I had watched it go from 100 to 500 to 1,000, and I was like, "There's no way this thing is going to be real." It's like what I called it was video game money. I'm like, "There's no way video game money is going to be real," and I kept on watching it and I'm, I never got invested in that time either. And so I, I was exactly the same position. A few years later, I went down the rabbit hole and I was like, okay, this is really going to change the world. And that's when I started, uh, started working in the industry, actually. Now, the biggest questions is what people ask me is like, how do you support something that is not backed by anything? Um, well, it, Technically, it is. It's backed by technology. It's backed by code, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've got to remember that fiat currency, so fiat basically, you know, being the paper currency and the, the debit cards and credit cards we're all used to today, that's not backed by anything either. We, were, we got off the gold standard in the United States in the early 70s. So for the last 50 years, you know, give or take, um, we've not been backed by anything. The government, the central banks, um, they decide, the central banks decide you know, how much they're going to print. They, they try and adjust for inflation and they will affect the money supply based on what they think it, it sh should be. And so Bitcoin is based on technology that you can never, you can never have more than 21 million Bitcoin, right? And so... Mm -hmm. the, there is a finite supply of Bitcoin, for example. Other cryptocurrencies have other rules. Um, you, you've obviously got to do your own research, but the the idea is that it's immutable. You can never change it. You can never you can never really adjust uh, Bitcoin. You can't. And so I think that that's that's where you get your faith. Is like the faith is in the code for something like Bitcoin, um, and then you have to look into other cryptocurrencies if you're going to get into them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely do your due diligence. Now, people have been saying that cryptocurrency has been following the stock market. And what do you, what is your opinion on that? And how do you think the, how long do you think the bear market is going to last? Yeah, good question. So I don't have any crystal balls, but um, <laughs> people are right in so far that yes, the, Cryptocurrency market, so digital currencies are 
have been correlated to the stock market over the last couple of years as another asset class, right? And so mm -hmm. it's just like stocks is an asset class, bonds, an asset class, gold is an asset class, cryptocurrency is an asset class. And so, yes, it's been, it's been closely correlated. However, it has been decoupling of late. So like over the last six to eight months, six to 12 months, the correlation has been getting less and less and less, meaning that when the stock market goes down per se, Bitcoin doesn't drop by as much, right? Or cryptocurrency doesn't drop by as much. And so I think we're, we're starting to see more maturity in the market as really large institutional players and more retail players like you and I uh, get involved in the market. And so how long will the, how long will the bear market last? That is very hard to say. I think we have, just from looking at really broad trends in the in the kind of economic space, we have another uh, another year or so of of intense intensity. Um, I think, and I think that will negatively affect cryptocurrency. Um, now, within that year, maybe maybe that only lasts for another five six months. Maybe it lasts for another eight to twelve months. I'm not sure, but uh, I think that. I think there's still there's still ways to go um, downwards potentially, um, but again, if you are dollar cost averaging and you're buying in, you you can you can still make money if you're thinking long term. You know, absolutely, I concur completely. And don't put in more money than you're um, willing to lose. Like, don't put in what you can't afford to lose. Is basically the great idea. And don't be greedy during the during the bull market has always been my philosophy and someone that I admire greatly, Warren Buffett. So always preaching that. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, it's it's obviously everyone needs to do their own due diligence. It's not financial advice. Mm -hmm. Um it, you know, and no one can predict what's gonna happen. But I think if you start to look at the trends or you work in the industry like I do, you know, I work with um, crypto crypto exchanges and trading companies, um, you start to see some patterns and you know, there's, there's, there's many people much smarter than I am, like Warren Buffett, like you mentioned, Ray Dalio, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's lots of, lots of people who do this all day long, every day for decades. And I, I would, I would start researching there. Interesting enough, Warren Buffett and, and the Wolf on Wall Streets are actually crit, are critics of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see why. You know, one of the one of the the typical arguments is that it's not a productive asset, right? Mm -hmm. So you invest in it. It's like the the argument is like even gold can be used for something, but cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, it can't really quote unquote can't be used for for anything. And so I can understand why there's there's criticism of of that. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I still think it's for everyone to do their own research and to figure out whether that is an area that you want to personally um, look at or not, right? Right, right. Dude, I was back in Miami about last weekend and I went to a gas station and they were accepting Bitcoin. And I just thought that was so cool how the domino effect's going and people are definitely pushing on, especially entrepreneurs are just willing to risk their businesses and their stake on it. So it's definitely up to the community to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, absolutely. And the current crypto uh, winner, is it a good thing or a bad thing for the industry in the long run? I think it's just like, it's just like anything, right? Like there, there are seasons, there's seasonality to our environment, right? Like you've got summer and you've got winter, you've got, you know, spring and fall, like there's seasons to things. And I think in the long run, when you look out many years, right? It depends on what you mean by long run. Is that a year, five years, 10 years? I think if you're looking long-term, you know, five, 10, 15 years, yeah, of course, you know, there, there are going to be times where many things get burnt to the ground, you know, and from the ashes, little seedlings of new companies and new ideas and new protocols and new ways of working with blockchain start to sprout up. And that happens in those kind of, forest fires if you will where things just burn and everything goes down um so yeah i think it's i think it's a good thing in the long run but with that being said 
you know, people need to really learn the lessons of the past and incorporate them into how they're building their, their dApps, their, how they're building into the metaverse, how they're building their NFTs, et cetera. It's like, if you're just going to repeat the same things that happened last season, then, you know, we're bound to not grow. Yeah. You definitely got to learn from your mistakes and failures. That's just, that's just like almost common sense. So. Almost, almost. <laughs> right. So your company helps Web3 companies grow even in difficult markets. Could you share some insight with Web3 entrepreneurs? Sure. So uh, just so people know, right? Like it, every company is going to be slightly different. Um, but yes, we, we help with growth. And so I would say in this time period right now, if you're a founder or you're a CEO and you're really thinking about how you're going to get your idea to the next level, there's a couple of things that I think you, you need to focus on. One is you need to be very mindful of your, your, your cash, your burn rate, right? If we're in the worst scenario, if we have another year or even longer of a winter, you need to be able to survive it, right? So you need to be very mindful and conscious of your cash. So that, that means you need to be thinking about where you're spending your money and where you're spending your resources in terms of your team and all the rest, right? So that's one thing. Um, but when it comes to actually marketing and marketing tactics, I think that right now community and content creation is going to be really, really critical to long-term growth. Yes, you can still leverage, you know, influencers and ads and sponsorships for short-term growth. But what we're seeing right now is it's not quite as effective. It costs a lot of money. You're taking a bit of a risk. Um, whereas if you're pushing forward on community and content, you're doing two things. You're building trust with people who can help you market in the future. Right? Mm -hmm. And then two, you're educating and communicating with your audience so that they really understand what your company, your DAP, your DAO, your, your game is all about and who you as a team are and whether they should trust you. So content and community is what I would really focus on right now. So what are your predictions for the future of Web3? Oh, geez, it's a big, big question. <laughs> um, I think I think there's there's a lot of interesting things happening in this space right now. I, I, I look forward to continuing to work with companies um, and seeing companies grow in in with DAOs and with new protocols and new layer twos and layer threes, et cetera. So I look forward to seeing that. Um, I'm interested to see how the NFT space starts to reshape itself. So we've gone through a cycle right now. There are some very interesting moves with utility, with NFTs. Now we're unfortunately seeing some challenges with the SEC and NFTs. So I'm, I'm interested to see how that starts to play out a little bit more next cycle. Um, but I think the, the future of Web3 is bright overall, right? Overall, I think we're going to start to see more companies adopt blockchain as a back-end structure to what they're building, right? So I think that's going to happen. And then I think we'll start to see more entrepreneurs and founders build on blockchain. So they're going to build dApps, they're going to build in the metaverse, they're going to build games, they're going to build NFTs, they're going to start to incorporate Web3 technology into what they're doing right now. I feel like people can get a little bit overwhelmed with all the new technology that's coming out as, as opposed to fintech, DEX, DAPs, like you mentioned, DeFi. And every time I turn my head, I, there's always something coming out. I'm just like, I just learned some this certain thing and then got something else coming out. I'm just like, oh my goodness. So how can you encourage the community to not get overwhelmed with all this new information yeah, that's just a great point. There's, I find the same thing and I work in the industry. Um, now I work with cutting edge companies, so I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be at the, at the forefront of everything. So I'm, I'm learning from, from the, the developers and, and the communities that are, are smarter than I am. And, uh, you know, 
I'm, I'm able to do that. But for the rest of the, the people who maybe don't work in the industry, I think it's important to kind of choose the area that you're most interested in. Um, yes, there are fantastic places to to get your information like this podcast right you can mm. get information by following leaders in the industry um but then it's also like don't overwhelm yourself like if you're interested in games and DeFi, like okay study that and, and get an understanding of that um you know if you're interested in nfts and utility of nfts like okay take a look at that instead if you're interested in dApps and something else like look at that and the, the structure of DAOs like you can look at that you know I think there's there's something for everyone to choose but I think it's important to remember that it is a broad industry and it's growing and so with all the new growth you're not going to be able to keep really you know deep insights on all the different areas of of the industry and that's okay you know it's like you you you'll get abreast of it you get get a general idea but focus on the areas that you're most interested in you mentioned nfts now my roommate he thinks that is a complete waste of money and i don't think he understands the the possibility it's not just art it's something that you could use for tickets and whatnot absolutely i i totally agree with you i think that we have just really scratched the surface with NFTs. And I think there's a lot of room to grow. I think that we're going to, we're going to see what people can come up with as they move forward with NFTs. Um, but, but with, to his point or her point, um, you, you know, NFTs, there are a lot of rug pulls. There are a lot of scams. And right now to what, to, to an investor who you mentioned earlier on the, in, in the podcast, Warren Buffett, we have not fully seen the utilization of NFTs. They're not fully productive assets. And so I would be, I'd be very mindful of that and very cautious in terms of looking at what, what projects or what things I invest in. Thank you for sharing that. Now, do you think regulation is good? Because every once in a while you get like a crypto ban and i in my opinion i think it's just for the government to catch up on education and and learning how the blockchain technology works yeah so i have a bit of a different viewpoint here uh, like uh, mm -hmm. so so i don't think i don't think the regulation the way it's progressing is necessarily a good thing okay I said necessarily. So, <laughs> so regulation overall, it does help onboard a lot of new users. It does help give us protection. It does help give us clear understandings as to what is legal and what is not legal, right? Like what can you do and what can you not do? It gives us the rules for the game. Um, however, the way in which they're approaching it from my perspective um, is a little different a little too much, a little too late, right? So instead of getting ahead of things and really trying to understand the technology as best as possible, from what we've seen, it's like, just wait. And then all of a sudden there will be a ruling on, you know, name something, tornado cash or a ruling on NFTs. And all of a sudden they come down with this hammer, this sledgehammer and like, boom, here's a whole bunch of regulation. And so I don't think that's good. Uh, I think there needs to be a much more proactive approach to regulation. Yeah, thank you for giving me that perspective. And it definitely opened up my mind. And I'll definitely consider that. Yeah, but I think I think form. what you said though is is accurate too, right? Like they do, mm -hmm. they do, they do, I think, put in a ton of regulation to slow things down and say, hey, wait, wait, wait. We need to get caught up. People need to get educated on this. So I agree with what you're saying. But in the general, in the general concept of You'll hear a lot of people say, oh, regulation is great for the industry. And I don't know, like regulation slows down innovation. Regulation makes things a lot tougher. Regulation gives incumbents or large companies who have already a, a, an invested stake in a crypto trading platform, an exchange, a DAP, whatever it might be. It gives them more protection. And so, of course, you're going to hear you know, large, large people talk, oh, regulation is great because they've already gotten started. You know, they've already gotten ahead. 
And I think that that's not, not quite a, a fair way of looking at it. I was watching something on Netflix and it was talking about Bitcoin and one of the guy, one of the critics ended up investing in the Bitcoin. I was like, wow, this guy was making up all these regulations just to get in, in into it himself. So I thought yeah. that was pretty neat. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it's, I think it's important for anyone who's, who's listening to, again, do your own research. I know research can take a lot of time, but when you start to look at the incentives behind some of the people who are talking about regulation um, or who are talking about certain aspects of crypto being good or bad, you start to look at like, well, why are they saying that? And when you see that, you start to realize, hey, wait a second, this person, like you said, may be saying it's a bad thing. Meanwhile, he or she's picking up a lot of crypto because they know that they're going to unleash some regulation in, in the future and crypto is going to go through the roof or something. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, you just got to do your own research. And patience is key. Plus, a little goes a long way. Yeah. Mo- I'd like to imagine, imagine you had put a hundred bucks in back when Bitcoin was a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, I'll be well off right now. <laughs> right. And it's, and, and I think that, that you, you brought up a really good point. It's like, you know, one of the misconceptions about crypto is that you've got to have a lot of money to play with it or to, to invest or to start getting into it. And that's not true. You know, like 50 bucks, you can buy some Bitcoin for 50 bucks, including transaction fees. Like you, you don't need a lot of money to get started. All right. Now, once you start to get into it a little bit more, sure, you want to look at wallets and, and having cold storage. Okay, so maybe you need 150 bucks. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't take thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to get started. You can start out very small, you know. So going back to NFTs, how will it bring real world value? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think we're going to start to see NFTs being used a lot more for memberships, a lot more for any kind of, you know, unique identification, right? Uh, that's where I think NFTs um, will really, will really shine. And so how that's going to be used, I'm not sure. Um, but given, giving people a unique piece of an art or a unique piece of music, a unique piece of a movie, a unique ticket, like you mentioned, unique membership, unique rewards, like mm-hmm. all of these things are possible with NFTs. And that's just a, what we know so far. Like, let's see where, where it goes in the future. What helps companies grow that are involved with cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology? Focus. So oh. I've, I've mentioned, I mentioned before, right? We help companies grow. And we, we helped uh, two companies get acquired this year for eight figures each, right? And so one of the things that we, we did in both cases was focus. So we use data and insights to start to see what's working and what's not working. And then we start to cut away on the things that are just not working, but are taking up our time or our money, right? And so I mentioned earlier on, Community and content are really, really important right now, especially in the crypto winter. And so I would focus on, on things like that and see where are your users coming from? Where, where is your community coming from? What do they interact with? And focus on that. You don't need to do everything. You need to focus when it comes to marketing. Who do you like to work with? I like to work with fast growing, innovative companies. So we've worked with a number of privacy companies. Mm-hmm. I think privacy is very important. We've worked with some top 10 uh, cryptos. We've worked with you know, the, the world's largest crypto browser. Um, you know, there are clients. Uh, we've worked with smaller startups in exchanges. But if you've got a fast growing Web3 company and you are really trying to make an impact, then those are the companies that, that we like to work with. We don't work with everyone, um, but those are the people we definitely do work with. Yeah, you kind of have to be selective and not enter into something you regret later on down the road. Exactly. Can you share what drives you? Yeah, I, I'm interested in seeing technology grow so that people can really take power and take you know, the, the power to affect your your finances and the power to affect your future into your own hands. 
right? So I wrote a book on cryptocurrency and that was one of the things that, that, um, that I, I talked about. It was an international best-selling book. And one of the things that I'd said in the, in the opening was, I think giving everyone the freedom and the power to be able to affect your finances is a good thing. You know, all the information's right there for you. Crypto is accessible to almost anyone who has a cell phone. You know, depends on your country, of course. You have to check mm -hmm. your, your local laws. But it's, it's accessible. You don't need a lot of money. $50 will, will, is fine to start. And you can really start to shape your financial future. And I think that's awesome. So, so that drives me. Excellent. Excellent. Now, I have not got a chance to read Decoding Digital, What is Cryptocurrency? But I'm definitely going to put that on my list to read. And I'll put a link in the description so other people can awesome. buy that too. Thanks. What are the pros and cons of NFTs? So, well, we've, we've talked about some of them already, right? Like the pros mm -hmm. are, it's a unique it's a unique identifier in, in the crypto world. So you can use it for many different things. Um, I think we've only started to scratch the surface when it comes to NFTs. So that's a pro. I think there's a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of accessibility for artists. There's a lot of accessibility for things like music and video. So we have yet to see where that takes us. So that's, those are all, I think, really amazing things. Some of the cons are there's a lot of, a lot of rug pulls in, in this space. There's that we still haven't quite figured out how to drive real world utility from many NFTs. There are some that are doing it. There's some that are attempting it, but it still has not become a really clear, clear path forward. Um, not from what I, what we've seen at least so far. And so I think that those are some of the cons that people need to be aware of, especially if they're looking to invest in the space, right? Mm -hmm. um, they, need, they need to think about that. There's, there's potential, but there's this downside of, hey, you know, you could invest and just like any investment, that could be worth 99% less than you bought it for in, in a year, um, depending on what it is, right? So it's happened to me. It's happened to me too. It's happened to all of us, right? But can't let that discourage you. Just absolutely. Yeah. I talked to two financial advisors, and they just said, "Treat it as a life insurance policy. Forget about it. Forget about it. Wait ten years, twenty years down the road, and then look at it." I was like, "All right, cool. I guess you know what you're talking about. You make money doing this." So, yeah. Anyways, so as we come to a close, is there any last words you want to share with my audience? Yeah, so if, if people are interested, we, um, we're doing a marketing audit for any, any interesting companies in the Web3 space or technology space. If you're into software, if you're into Web3, the metaverse, NFTs, um, you can go to digitalvision.io forward slash audit. And um, you, know, you, can, you can apply for an audit there and, and we'll, someone on our team, myself included potentially, will take a look at at your, your responses and, and help you get insights into how to focus your marketing for growth. That link will also be in the description. So anybody that is interested, go ahead and check that out. And I am definitely, I can't thank you enough for coming out on the show. I know you're a busy guy and have blockchain to deal with and employees and engine, uh, engineers. So I wish the best with your endeavors and I hope to see you in the future. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on the podcast. And, you know, I'm glad you're, you're helping push forward education in the space so that more people can, can really start to learn about the technology. So thanks. Oh, oh believe me, man, we just getting started. All right, yeah, dude. absolutely. All take right. It easy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.